Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. All over the news today, worldwide. Front cover of Financial Times, SoftBank falling 6% as NASDAQ whale strategy unnerves traders. Even right now, as we're watching the markets at this moment, SoftBank Group is down actually more than 6%. It's down about 7.15%. What the heck is going on? Or is this going to continue for SoftBank? Is this truly an emergency situation? Is the stock going to start crashing from here? I want to give you an updated report from my video uh, two days ago to give you an update. Uh, but please watch the video from two days ago first before you watch this one, as this is a continuation of the previous video. For those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, hedge fund guy, uh, traveled the world. I uh, got tired of traveling and came back to Tokyo, Japan towards the end of uh, last year and just started the video, uh, just started the channel you're watching now, the English version about two and a half months ago and started the Japanese version uh, in YouTube on a separate channel in January of this year. So hopefully uh, you will press subscribe to the button below and follow me going forward. Today's topic, continuation of the video from two days ago. And I want to divide this up in three main topics, but today is a little bit different from before. Before I was talking about what this news was. Today is a little bit more focused on the actual price of SoftBank stock. Is this going to continue going down or not? So number one, a little bit of a clarification on what's going on with the current news in SoftBank stock. Number two, today we'll actually look at the price of SoftBank stock, look at the charts, look at the short interest, do a fundamental, do some analysis of SoftBank itself. And then number three, I'll give you my recommendation today on what I think you should do with SoftBank, the stock, whether you hold it or you don't hold it, I'll give you my recommendation. So in that order, let's get started. First and foremost, let's do a quick review of what the heck is going on. So the Financial Times, as far as I know, they were the first newspaper that started reporting about SoftBank being the Nasdaq whale. It was also out in the Wall Street Journal. It was also out in a lot of different places. But I think Financial Times reported this on Friday. Now, uh, in terms of the basics of this news, again, guys, please watch my previous video so you're getting the best usage out of your time because I'm going to assume you're watching this video based on you've already watched the previous video because I'm going to be talking about a lot of different lingos which you might not understand in terms of options and stuff. So again, it's in the video uh, below. I put it in the description area, in the comments area and the ending screen. So please watch that video first. So in terms of updated news, guys, um, we're seeing news out all over the place because basically SoftBank is falling today over 7% on heavy volume and why is this such a big deal because guys globally markets today they're really not moving that much and globally when markets are not moving it's a very very uh slow day for a stock a big stock like softbank to move over seven percent that's a big deal the markets today were down three four percent five percent and one stock was moving down seven percent it's not as big of a deal everything is relative in the market so a day like this when there's barely any down move softbank moving this much it's a big deal and why is this happening it's more and more news coming out about masoyoshi san and his uh sort of new option trading strategies now again there's lots of reports out, lots of different controversies on what's going on. But one thing is for sure, he has been buying options. SoftBank has been buying options and they've been buying what's called call options. And the updated news, it seems, is that they're buying call options, which are out of the money. And they've been buying what's called a bull spread. Now, a bull spread, basically, for those of you who are sort of new to finance, uh, it is uh, sort of a strategy in which you are buying call options, but you're also selling call options at a higher strike price. Now, what does this mean? Guys, again, I'm going to just assume you've watched my previous video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to watch the first video first. But you're buying calls and then you're also you're buying calls, let's say, at a strike price here, X1, as you can see here. And then you're selling calls at a strike price here. So you end up with this red line, which is your profit structure based on profit loss on your Y axis and the stock price on your X axis. So you kind of have this like 
uh, zigzag formation. It's a very common strategy used on Wall Street. But uh, what sort of catching people off guard is a large company like SoftBank is engaging in this type of behavior, uh, this type of behavior that usually hedge funds or option traders will engage in. He is engaging in this type of behavior. Now, he is also doing what's called uh, out of the money options. Out of the money basically means that he's buying call options with the strike price that is higher than the current price. So let's say, for example, let's take a look at uh, Apple, right? Apple is a company, it's, it's, at least rumors are going around. It's one of the companies that SoftBank has been buying call options in Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, some of these big high tech fang names. So for Apple, for example, its current price is 120 and out of the money call option would be, let's say, buying a strike option of 150 or something of that nature. So what indicates is that when SoftBank is doing this, these out of the money options usually have a lower delta and therefore lower gamma. But however, they are much, much riskier. And the fact that he is buying these uh, call options, but also selling at the same time, there's no information confirming this, but just from my experience, the fact that he's putting on these strategies probably means that these are not very long-term expiration because he probably means the reason why you usually do bull spreads is because you want to lower the cost of the strategy because you're buying these call options, they're premiums, they're kind of like lottery tickets. They're probably going to go to zero, right? Because they're out of the money. You don't know whether you're going to be able to use it. You know, Apple price may not go to 150 and then these options expire worthless. So what you do is you sell uh, Apple, you sell even more out of the money at a higher strike price. So you buy call options with a strike price of 150, then you sell call options at a strike price of let's say 170. So you make money when the price of Apple goes anywhere between 150 and 170. That's the basics of a bull spread. He's probably doing this because the cost, well SoftBank is probably doing this because the cost was quite hefty of buying the options. So he's selling a little bit so that you get a little bit of money back. And look like likely he's putting on the bull spread, plus he's doing it while he's still selling some stock. So that he's selling stock, but he still wants to participate in a little bit future gains in case they come. Now he's getting a lot of lot of hits on this. Uh, a lot from the media, uh, especially because this is a very uh, not is not a normal procedure for a large company to take uh, in such option type behavior. OK, so uh, again, guys, if you didn't understand some of the basics, go to my first SoftBank video as I talk about the basics of call options, and what he's doing and which stocks that he's been engaging in. Second part of this video is the price of SoftBank stock going to continue to go down from here. It's very interesting looking at this news today softbank is down about 7.4 percent while other big names in japan sony nintendo toyota fast retail fanic not really that much big moves today fanic is up today seven percent which is interesting while softbank is down 7.4 percent now is this move going to continue to analyze that we have to actually look at the price of the chart of softbank group now let's start looking at this chart here 9984 right now it's currently down 7.1 percent it is 315 uh japan time at the moment now uh down 7.1 percent actually the markets have just closed uh the volume here is the first thing i want to look at this is quite big volume not that special though compared to the last few months i'd say so volume is not anything crazy the chart pattern i do not like this looks like a head and shoulders right this is head this is shoulders this looks like a head and shoulders that is dangerous i don't like that right obviously a gap down and a head and shoulders that combination is not good at all uh looking at the macd stochastics rsi again guys if you don't understand how to use these tools i put it below in my description area all the basic videos that i would recommend you watch before you watch my videos so you get an efficient use of your time for how to use rsi macd bollinger bands short-term strategy long-term strategy sharp ratio get these basics first then i would recommend you watch these videos so in terms of MACD here, it indicates that it's in a short term downtrend at the moment. These parameters look pretty accurate overall. Uh, they're not perfect, but it looks pretty accurate. MACD looks all right. Uh, stochastic same here. It hasn't been so accurate here, but more recent data indicates that it has been sort of accurate. So it's in a declining trend. 
Uh, what actually, what stands out to me the most is RSI. This I don't like here. This is a declining trend for the RSI here, you could see. Uh, one, two, three points, a few points here. We're gonna, going down a declining trend. Now it's below 50 again. RSI is a strong signal to me. The head and shoulders chart and a gap down movement. Decent volume. It looks to me like it's probably going to keep going down. But I also want to look at uh, short interest ratio for SoftBank. Why? Because SoftBank, like a little bit similar to Tesla, a little bit similar to some other companies, uh, it's got a colorful CEO. I actually look up the Masayoshi san a lot. I, I've read his bi biography. I think he's a great guy. Uh, I think he's very, very innovative, very risk-taking. Risk I like risk-taking people. But separating my emotions, uh, we have to separate emotions from investing because one has very little to do with the other. And sometimes emotions just get in the way of uh, our making a logical decision. Now, looking at SoftBank, uh, we also should look at short interest ratio because we want to see how heavily are people betting on shorts. I talked about this with Tesla. Um, again, I'll put the Tesla video at the end of the screen too. Tesla, a lot of people short it. And then when the stock price starts going up, people have to buy back their shorts. It's called, uh, what is it? A short squeeze. And then this short squeeze is basically because when you're shorting the stock, when people are shorting the stock, they're borrowing it from somebody else who owns the stock. So they're paying a fee to borrow it. And they're doing it usually on margin. Well, almost always on margin. Now, to buy back this short position, usually when it starts to go up, it's because they get into a margin call. The stock price starts going up and, and oh crap, you're trading on margin. It means you're trading with borrowed money. It's not your money. So your account goes into deficit versus the cash value. You go into a margin call. Then you have to rapidly start buying back your stock position to get out of the stock. Then this can cause a short squeeze and the stock price to suddenly move up. So these can be dangerous in these, some of these stocks. Uh, so this is why I like to look at the short interest ratio. Now, short interest ratio right now, I'm looking at uh, for SoftBank just over the last one year or so. It's quite low. Uh, I don't have five years data. Unfortunately, if somebody else has this, please send me. But on a one year basis, it's quite low. It was obviously high here, but it was probably high for most companies during the Corona crash. But what's interesting that it was already high towards January. So when the markets were still stable, it was already high here. So I think that it was high even before Corona. And then it got really high after the, during the Corona crash. And when the market started to subside, it started to get low. Now, what's interesting here is that it's even lower than when the markets were rebounding in May and June. So now it's quite low, uh, indicating that there's a lot of, um, I'd say, confidence in SoftBank at the moment. Not many people are shorting it. This is a pretty low short interest ratio. I guess short interest ratio is the number of shares that are shorted versus the overall float, meaning the outstanding number of shares in the stock. So this is indicating that right now, not many people are shorting it relative to the last one year history. It may be actually safe to short some of this stock. Okay, so last third part of my video, what do I recommend for you to do with your portfolio? As usual and always guys, investing is and always will be self-responsibility and I recommend most people put their investment into long-term investment, 70, 90% of their net worth, dividing up this way for long-term retirement and then rest short-term 30 to 10%. Again, guys, to understand further, please see the description area below and you will see my past videos about long-term, short-term, sharp, etc. So you understand what I'm talking about. So you get a good use, efficient use of your time. Uh, today's recommendation is short-term. So this is anywhere between a few days and a few months. Uh, what I recommend is looking at SoftBank here. I actually think that looking at this chart, it's likely going to continue to go down. And uh, this is not anything against uh, personal decisions with what Masayoshi san is doing. It's just based on logical decisions. I want to give a recommendation here because guys, he's taking a lot of heat for what's going on here. Uh, especially I see in the comment section, uh, the English channel, also the Japanese channel, what the heck is Masayoshi san doing, blah, 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 blah. Guys, he's not doing anything technically wrong. He's not breaking the law. It's not mani stock manipulation. He's not, I don't deserve, I don't think he deserves heat. Uh, and often, I think a lot of times us as human beings, me included, when we don't understand something, we automatically put it into a bucket that's negative to say, OK, something is weird. Human beings often we naturally as human beings fear what we don't understand. So just because you or I may not understand what's going on with SoftBank, may not understand what the heck is an option, understand what is a covered call, what is a bull spread 
all these weird lingo terms, which it's okay if you don't know it. I'm a Wall Street guy. I've, I've been trained to know this. So, I mean, like, it's just like a doctor is trained to know how to, uh, you know, know a human body. Like, we all have our specialties. But just because you don't understand something, I would recommend don't put it into a negative bucket. Don't assume Masayoshi Son's a bad guy and he's doing something bad or illegal or blah, 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 blah. Because that's not the case. Separate our emotions from logic. This is part of investing. The markets don't care two cents about our emotions. So you got to separate those two out. So that's my first piece of advice. Second piece of advice is thinking logically, guys. I think that was actually, it's a decent time that you can probably short a little bit of SoftBank uh, just as a hedge. If you own SoftBank shares, I'd say, yeah, you probably want to be selling some at the moment because this is not a good chart pattern. This is quite a big drop off. And short term for the next few days, I don't see this suddenly bouncing back up to 7,000. I could be wrong, but I don't see this happening. Usually when there's a big gap like this, the last time the stock had a big gap was during the coronavirus crash. And obviously during there, it went straight down. When the gap up as well in February, you know, it stayed high for a while. It didn't just go suddenly back down. So usually these gaps are pretty powerful. I would say that it's not going to probably go back up to 7,000 anytime soon. You probably want to sell some of your short term positions if you have it. Uh, also, you might want to put it into a short bucket for hedging. I've been talking about this right now. Uh, the markets are volatile, right? The VIX is going up. Again, see my other SoftBank video. I was explaining how the VIX goes up, volatility goes up. You got to watch that video first. Sorry. Uh, so when volatility is high, this is a good time to be hedging short term. So right now there's a bunch of long positions, right? U.S. banks uh, that I've been recommending, U.S. banks, Japanese banks, jets, the, uh, uh, U the U.S. airlines. So now is a good time to be shorting as I've been saying short Tesla. I said it last week before the stock crashed uh, short QQQ, which is the Nasdaq one. I was saying this last week last week and you might also want to put softbank into this bucket as well just to short so you have an equally weighted position perhaps in your sh a short term investment again guys this is short term i'm not talking about your long term i'm not talking about here i'm talking a 30 to 10 percent short term you may want to have some shorts and softbank is probably a good candidate to have in that bucket as well so hopefully you guys found this video useful. Uh, looking forward to your comments and suggestions. Let me know, guys, if there's any other content you want to hear. The Japanese uh, channel is quite uh, voracious with their comments and what they want to hear. So I'm looking forward to your feedback from the English side. Uh, also, guys, English channel, do know there's a lot of spam right now on my comment section. I don't know where the heck is this is coming from. I'm still new to YouTube. I'm trying to get rid of all this junk. But please note that uh, this is not me. It's just spam. I don't know where the heck it's coming from. I'm on top of it. Please try to ignore those comments. And also note the uh, English uh, translation, the captions. I'm making sure uh, that Google is on top of this as well. It's not me. It's the Google program that is putting into the captions, the subtitles. So also uh, let me know if you have any trouble with that as well. Thanks so much, guys. Please subscribe to my channel below and would very much appreciate if you send my channel link out to any of your friends and buddies as a recommendation. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful day. Adios, amigos.